Evans and Paul. This is going to be awesome. Um, you know, James, thank you for choosing Philly to play. You know, players like James don't come along every, every day. So, like, the fact that he's here is a testament to everything that's been built, um, starting with Joel's MVP caliber play and what he's been doing and growing into. And then, obviously, the leadership around me with Doc and Daryl and Elton. And so, thank you, everyone. And, look, the only last thing I'd say is that I uh, very much appreciate uh, Ben, what he did, Seth, uh, Andre, the contributions to Philly. Um, and we wish them well. But now, uh, let's do this thing. Thank you. We're very excited. Um, look, uh, Josh and ownership. Um, have been behind Doc and uh, the front office um, 100 to do whatever it takes to put us in the position to, to uh, as Doc says, be the winner, uh, win the last game of the season. Um, you know, we've, we've all worked tirelessly. I'd you know, I'd like to also thank Ben and, and Seth and Andre um, uh, for their contributions. You know, Doc and the coaching staff and, and the players have put us in a spot where uh, as we make this trade, we, we are well positioned to, to go on a run uh, and a run that hopefully excites, you know, the, the city of uh, Philadelphia. Um, with Paul, um, he's someone Paul knows that uh, we were talking to this offseason and, and hoping to acquire. Um, so it took us a little time, but uh, we're really excited about what he what he can bring. He's a very versatile player. Uh, and then, uh, you know, as Doc said a couple of days ago uh, when he was looking at the team, he was we've been looking for a player with a particular set of skills that he's developed over uh, over his career and and James uh, and James Harden. So uh, having two uh, an MVP and then a guy who's on pace to probably be the MVP if he can keep it up um, is really exciting. Um, all the hard work happens from here. We haven't accomplished anything yet. Um, and I love that, uh, you know, that Docs, as a champion, you know, is here to lead us. So um, turn it over to questions. No, oh, Doc, sorry, my bad. Uh, well, ditto, really. I don't have a lot to say. I mean, I think you guys would rather ask uh, questions except for uh, I'll start off with thanking Ben and Seth and um, uh, Drum. I mean, they all were, were great, uh, each one of them. Uh, enjoyed coaching all of them. Um, you know, uh, one of the reasons I wanted to come here, as Josh knows in our interview, is that um, we would make a commitment to win uh, and being a winner. Um, and we talked about it. You know, uh, we can do a lot of winning or we can try to be the winner. And uh, being a winner is hard. Uh, and that's what we want to become. Um, and that's why we make trades like this, going out and getting Paul and James. Uh, we want the opportunity to be the winner, and we believe that this trade does that. Thank you, guys. We'll start with Steve for question, and then John and then. <coughs> How y'all doing? Welcome to Philly. James, this question is for you. I guess it's a two-part question. Why did you want out of Brooklyn, and, and why did you want Philadelphia to be your destination? Um, originally, you know, when I was going through everything I was going through, uh, you know, in Houston, uh, Philly was my, you know, my first choice. Uh, it just didn't happen. So, um, you know, but just detailed, I don't really want to get into, you know, the, the Brooklyn situation. I just knew, you know, for a very long time, this was a, a perfect fit. And obviously, you got a, a, a big man, the best big man in the league, and Joel. And then, obviously, the coaching, uh, just from top to bottom, it made sense. And um, I'm just happy and, and blessed that I'm here. And um, as Doc and, and everybody knows and everybody wants is, is to win and be the last team standing. So um, I'm excited for the opportunity. James, are you able to clear up what happened with the opt in? I guess there was a report that you were going to opt in for the next year here with the Sixers after the trade. You still have the opportunity to do that. I still that. have the opportunity to do it. And will you? And will yes. Yeah, but it just everything happened so fast. I just want to, I just want to get here and, and take my time and, and most importantly focus on on the end game and that's winning the championship. And what can Joel and B do for your game, and what can you do for Joel's game? I think we complement each other. You know, obviously the whole world knows how how great Joel's been playing. 
uh, not just scoring the basketball, but rebounding. He got a triple double last game. Just like his uh, his presence alone is, is unbelievable. Uh, and I feel like I'm the same way as far as you know making my teammates better and, and doing different things that impact the game at the highest level. Um, and then we have a, a great core of guys um, that can that can help also help with that. So uh, I mean, I wish I was playing tonight, but you know, just take my time and you know, after the break we'll, we'll get things going. James, Jamie Apodi from 6ABC, uh, back here. Um, you haven't stepped on the court yet, uh, but before you even were in Philadelphia, your jersey sold out at the arena in less than an hour. Uh, there was a billboard touting welcome the beard. Uh, how has that reception made you feel, and how do you feel about playing in front of these fans? These fans is uh, probably the best fans in the NBA. You know, a lot, of the, a lot of teams say that, a lot of organizations say that, you know, a lot of fan bases say that, but like ride or die, like, probably the best fans in the NBA. And uh, I'm just happy that they're on my side and I'm not getting booed <laughs> booed as an opposing team. But uh, I'm excited, man, just to love the atmosphere, just you know, going to that arena. It's going to be something special. Daryl, a question for you first. You say uh, this team is set up for the future. And the way I understand it, with this trade and other trades, you cannot use a first-round draft pick till 2029. Is that correct? Because you can't trade two number ones in a row with the way you have them spread out. How much of an issue could that be in trying to make a trade? And then I'll have a uh, question for James as well. Yeah, our focus is obviously to win now. Um, in terms of our tradable first, that's technically true, although you know there are things you can do behind the scenes. Actually, Miami just did. Uh, to modify certain things to make a first tradable if we wanted to go that route. But look, our focus was to keep as many of the great players as we could. Uh, we're in the window of Joel and James and Tobias right now. Um, and, you know, making sure Tyrese Maxey is here, making sure that Matisse Teibel is here. Those were the big priorities. Uh, we wanted to give up nothing, but <laughs> you have to put, give up something to make a trade and get a Hall of Famer. and and a, a player that can put us into a different tier uh, of competing. Uh, so we're very comfortable. And then we have, you know, thanks again to Doc and the coaching staff, we have a bunch of young players. I think you're seeing them uh, out there contributing the last few games because we, you know, we had to include, include Drummond in this deal. You know, Paul Reed's come in and d done a nice job. Isaiah Joe's come in. Shake Milton's a young player. So we, we have a lot of things that are uh, both putting us in a position to win now, but also, uh, you know, players who are still on their improvement uh, curve. Obviously, Maxi being uh, the one in the most extreme. So we're 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 very comfortable where we're at now and going forward. James, just, just, James, just to follow up on Keith's question about uh, coming here, it's three teams now in 14 months. Can you explain the thoughts behind that and why it's so many in such a short period of time? <laughs> I mean, it wasn't planned like this. <laughs> uh, 14 months ago, I, I didn't see myself in three different teams, but it, we are where we are here today, and I'm happy. Um, last year has been uh, a lot of ups and downs, uh, you know, a lot of stress. Um, but whatever, that's in the past. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm healthy, and uh, you know, it's an opportunity of a lifetime. To echo something James said, I, when I spoke to Sean Marks over the past. Um, you know, week primarily and a little bit before that, like I, I felt like it should have been a three team deal originally uh, that, you know, the fit was there for that. And, um, you know, would have been uh, would have been ideal, I think, for all three teams if it was originally structured that way. Uh, right here, Mike Sealski from the Philadelphia Inquirer for James. Um, to kind of piggyback on Howard's question a little bit, what do you feel like, whether on the court or off, are the conditions that you need for you to be at your best? I think I'm going through that right now. Uh, like as far as me, I got to make sure I'm 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 great, I'm healthy, uh, I'm in a place where I can be the best James Harden. I can be on the court, and everything else from what I've been here the last couple of days is already in place. You know, from obviously, you know. Uh, Josh and, and Daryl do the thing, but you know Doc. You know he makes he makes sure everything everybody's uh, knows their role, their structure. And for me, I just got to go out there and do what I do. Um, so my job is pretty easy. 
Hey, James. Uh, Kyle Newbeck from Philly Voice. Uh, Joel is pretty different from a lot of the bigs that you've played with in the past. You play with a lot of rim runners, guys who are running pick and rolls with you. Uh, have you talked to him much about how your games are going to mesh and you know, how do you see that partnership coming together on the floor? We're both at a, at a high level to where we'll figure it out. Um, you know, Joel does everything on the floor, you know, so and we got we got guys on our team that are very smart. Um, we communicate and we're going to and we have coaching that's going to put us in positions to be successful. Listen here, they have something great already going on. I'm, I'm just here to contribute. And I know that I can do that very well. So on the court, when you got high level skill guys that knows the game and all they want to do is win, we'll figure it out. Gina Mizell with the Philadelphia Inquirer. Daryl, you sort of touched on this in your opening remarks, but just how did you sort of balance the possibility of making this deal now versus maybe waiting until the off season? And then just what does this now do as far as your overall roster building? I know you're always trying to tweak and improve, but just a deal like this, where does this put you guys as far as your overall roster building vision? Well, Elton Brandon and I have been working on this since, um, you know, since Rich Paul came to us and said, you know, that uh, Ben was looking for a new situation. Um, if we could have gotten a deal done then, we would have done it then. I think just it was pretty straightforward for us, for Elton and I from the beginning. Um, you know, our, our mission that's been given to us and the whole reason that, you know, everyone uh, on the team is really here. Um, you know, Elton's here to win a title. Doc's here to win a title. It's all unfinished. All unfinished business uh, for all of us, and we've all and we've all come together. And we knew from the moment Ben asked out that if we were going to do a trade, it had to be for one that we thought uh, could allow us to compete at a high level. And the way this league works, uh, you have to get players of the caliber of of, of a James Harden, uh, and you and to pair with a Joel Embiid and, to, and a Tobias, you can win without it, but. You look historically in the league, you're, you're, you're looking at pretty long odds if you don't have two great players of that level uh, of play out there. Hey, Paul. Uh, Maureen Rosen with Sixers.com. Um, you've played for some really good teams, and you've played for some really good coaches. But what excites you about this team and this coach? Yeah, you know, first off, appreciate it. It was getting a little weird up here. But... Uh, <laughs> 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 but uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, the, the culture, you know, just, you know, coming into practice, you know, yesterday and, you know, seeing the joy on the, on the guy's face and seeing how together everybody is and seeing the energy in the building. Um, that, that's what I love. You know, that's what I love to be around. That's what I love to come to every day. And um, being on those good teams in the past that I've been on, you know, all had that same energy. And uh, coming here, man, you know, with the, the talent and the players and the coaching staff and organization mixed with that energy and talent, I mean, it's I mean, unbelievable. Paul Hudrick, Liberty Ballers. Uh, for James, Tyrese Maxey has really developed a really big role here. I guess, what have you seen from him going up against them, and how do you see your games meshing together? Um, well, he's, he's had a, an opportunity this year because of, cir of the circumstances, but his confidence is just going off the roof. Like, his, 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 his attack, he's always on attack, and then obviously his three-point shooting is, is extremely improved. But... That right there is overall, you know, entire game is just improved. And I think his aggressive mentality um, to get to the basket, to knock down the shot when he's open, uh, it explains it all. You know, obviously, then he has he's surrounded by really good players, and then a, the MVP of this year um, to make his job a lot easier. But and, and that's where I'm coming in. You know, to, to talk to him, to help him as, as many ways as I can. But uh, he's been doing an unbelievable job, and he's he's only going to continue to get better. This is for uh, Josh. Um, when you bought the team 11, 12 years ago, the big first move was Andrew Bynum, and that didn't work. Then you had Sam come in and deconstruct and reconstruct with a bunch of draft picks. That kind of didn't work. And then you had Jimmy and Tobias. That hadn't worked. And uh, then you had bully ball with Al Horford. What makes this different? <clears throat> we got two great <laughs> players to build around. We've got... Um, a great uh, coach in Doc Rivers, a great, you know, unbelievable front office with Elton and Darrell. Uh, we have the commitment of ownership to do what it takes. And then we've got a lot of young players with Matisse and Tyrese, Tobias. Uh, so we, we, I think we have the ingredients to win here. 
and uh, we're gonna. Our goal is to win a championship. We're gonna keep trying until we get there. It's uh, there's no there's no straight lines to the top. You gotta just keep pushing. Can I follow? If I could follow with Daryl, um, where do you think the ceilings are for Tyrese and Matisse, who you protected, really for at least well, since you got here, really? Yeah, they were critical. Tyrese absolutely has a chance to be an All Star in this league. Uh, obviously, you know, there's a lot of work, but I know he'll put it in. That's one thing that's amazing about Tyrese is his, like James said, his, uh, you know, his confidence, but also his commitment to put the work in has been incredible. And then, uh, you know, Tybal, I think, easily could be Defensive Player of the Year uh, after Joel wins it first, he told us. Uh, but, but, uh, but, you know, Tybal, as you saw last game, six, six steals and, I think uh, the coaches have really worked with him on, you know, both using some of his unique skills and and also, um, you know, being being solid and and providing that solid defense you need to win, uh, you know, to have a, a championship caliber um, lineup on the floor. So both of them, I think, sky's the limit, and and that's a big reason why um, we made sure that they weren't in this trade. Hey guys, Chris Franklin, NJ.com. Uh, this, mess, this question is for Daryl and for Doc. You guys gave up some size in the trade when it came to Andre Drummond, who also was playing well as well, too. How do you guys look to, will you guys look to replace the size aspect of that when it comes to him? And if not, who do you guys foresee in taking over that role? Well, we're looking. I mean, uh, we like some of the guys we have. Obviously, Paul is going to help us in that. Um, both Pauls, and Paul Reed as well. Um, you know, we have Charles Bassey. Um, but, you know, the buyout market is out there as well. And uh, we're looking. Uh, Tim Bontis from ESPN uh, for James here in the middle. Sorry. Uh, sorry, I'm in the back. Uh, you mentioned before, James, that when you were originally looking to leave Houston last year, that this was the first place that was initially where you thought you'd be. Why did that not happen? I'm going to have a follow up. I don't know. <laughs> Well, the way it was presented, the way it was presented was that you sort of had the option to choose where you wanted to. No, go. I mean I wish it worked like that, but you know organizations got to do, organizations got to do what's best for their their team, you know, present and future. Um, so it didn't work like that, and you know I had to go to Brooklyn, which obviously we all know that could have been something special, but whatever whatever reason was for that, so. Uh, here I am today. And, and, and to that second point, um, d is the uncertainty around Kyrie's situation this year, did that play a part in how things developed over the past couple of months for you? Um, very minimal. Honestly, like, obviously, Kyrie, me and Kyrie are, are, are really good friends. Uh, you know, whatever he was going through or is still going through, that's his personal preference. Uh, but it definitely did impact the team because originally, you know, obviously, me, Kyrie, and Katie on the court, you know, and winning covers up a lot of that stuff. But um, it was unfortunate that, you know, we played 16 games out of whatever it was. And, you know, it is what it is. But um, this is, you know, here in Philly is an opportunity uh, that I'm looking forward to. About Noah, then Ty. Hey, James. Uh, Noah Levick, NBC Sports Philadelphia. Uh, Doc told us a few days ago you've reached out to him previously uh, about wanting, you know, him to be your coach. Uh, why did you do that, and what are your expectations of playing for him? <laughs> One of the best coaches to ever coach the game of basketball. Like, why wouldn't I want to be led by that? Um, you know, I've, I've been doing it for a very long time, but he was doing it way longer than me, and he's experienced way more than me. And as a, the player that I am, I still need to learn. I still need to be uh, helped um, and taught and be put in a position to, to be successful. You know, so, you know, why not? Uh, Kai Carlin over at Sixers Wire. Uh, James, we talked about Joel and Tyrese, but I'm just curious how you think you're going to be able to fit next to Tobias as well, just a guy, you know, out on the perimeter. Tobias is a guy that can go get you 20 a night, and I feel like it's my job to get that out of him. Um, he's very versatile as well, you know, so just just my job is to be the, help be the leader, man, push guys and, and, and get that swagger out of guys every single night because ultimately that's going to you know, help us get to the end goal, and that's to win a championship. So uh, we all know what, how, how great of a, uh, a talent Tobias is. 
But, uh, you know, it's my job to help him with that and, and from top to bottom. Right here, Jane. Um, well, how is your physical conditioning right now as far as, like, being able to play in a game? How does your hamstring feel? And are you kind of on board with we've been told you won't, you know, play until after the All-Star break? Is Was that, uh, I guess, a collaborative decision? Yeah. So um, hamstring feels really good. Um, just doing a lot of strengthening work right now. Um, definitely was a collaborative decision on, you know, after the break, making sure we're a full go. Like, uphill is the only way we can go. Um, and then to my conditioning is great. You know, I've been doing a lot of running, a lot of sprints, a lot of treadmill work, uh, strength and conditioning. Um, but it's nothing like basketball conditioning, you know, playing and playing five on five and picking and rolls and getting hit, things like that. So that's something that I got to incorporate. But overall, my body feels great. James, uh, we talked a lot about, we've heard the word championship being thrown around here uh, for the last half hour. Um, pairing you and Joel, you know, do you see that being possible? I'm sure you see that being possible this year. Hell what yeah. will it take to make it happen? Was that a hell yeah? Hell yeah. <laughs> um, there's a lot that goes into it. Obviously, it just ha doesn't happen overnight. But I think uh, just here being around guys and, you know, they have the right mindset. Obviously, you know, it's coming from the coaching staff. Um, but you know, after the break, man, it's just it's go time. You know, so as, as much as, you know, I can incorporate and, and figure things out fast, which, you know, I probably it won't, you know, be long, um, the better things will be. But, I mean, it, it shouldn't take long at all. Like, I'm pretty, I pretty much can fit anywhere. And this question's for Paul. Paul, I was wondering, though, know, if you could tell us, like, what it was like, like, when, like, this way you found out about the trade and how that went about and everything. Yeah, I found out the trade. I was actually in Atlanta playing five on five in the middle of a, a competitive game. Not golfing? I yeah. wasn't. It was cold. It was too cold. It was too oh, cold God. out there. Yeah. <laughs> but in the middle of the game and my brother looked over and said, Hey, you going to Philly? I was like, What? You know, it's a competitive game going. I'm trying to win the game. So uh, when the game got over with, that's when it really hit me and uh got really excited about it. And um, that's that's how it happened. Uh, Mike Sielski from the Inquirer again for James. At the start of the press conference, Josh thanked you for wanting to play in Philadelphia. Um, based on everything that's publicly available, you didn't want to play in Houston anymore. You were able to leave. You didn't want to play in Brooklyn anymore. You were able to leave. What does that say about you, and what does it say about the power that NBA players wield in this era of basketball? Um, for me, I think uh, you know just the relationship that I had in Houston uh, it was basically mutual, but everything was on me <laughs> and same uh, in the last situation. But, um, you know, for the most part, we can control our own destiny. Not that, not that I say that's a good thing or bad thing, but uh, I know in my situation, um, you know, for whatever reason, I'm just it – w it was mutual and the relationship – not very, I mean, new with Josh, but obviously knowing Daryl, knowing Tad, you know, from my Houston days, knowing Doc. Um, for me, it just it, it made sense, man. It's, it's a time where I needed to be, uh, you know, around the guys that I know that want to win and know that they are willing to do whatever it takes to win. And um, the structure here is, is unbelievable. Uh, that's the goal, man. That's the goal. Like Daryl said, the opportunity to window is now. Joel is playing the best he's ever played. Um, you know, so my job is to come out there and, and help him and help the entire team win the championship this year and years going forward. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.